If you're building APIs but don't know how to use Postman, you're in trouble. Postman is an essential tool for developing and testing your APIs to make sure they are functioning as you expect. By watching this video, you will learn everything you need to know to get started working with Postman. The first thing you need to know is your way around Postman. So you'll notice this menu at the top here, and we have a menu down the side here. At the top, we have workspaces, and I already have my workspace set to YT. We're not going to be covering anything other than collections and environments that you'll see in the left-hand side here. Workspaces are used to organize APIs, and there are three different types of workspaces, personal, team, and public. The next thing you need to know about is collections. So I'm gonna create a collection here, and you'll see that it opens a new tab, and I'm going to call this collection user API. And you can see that we get this user API folder here. And then the last thing you need to know about is environments. You can see I have no environment set here and I can click this little eye and you can see that I can add an environment here or I could add global environment variables. And if you add a global environment variable, it's going to add it to all environments. But if you just add a variable to a specific environment, it's just going to be in the environment that you select up here. So I can click add on environments and I'm going to create a new environment called local. And if I save this, you can see that I now have local in my drop down here. Make sure you have an environment selected. Otherwise, what I show you next isn't going to work properly. So inside of our user API collection, I'm going to right click and click add folder. And I'm going to add a new folder called user. And inside of user, I'm going to add a request. And you can see it opens up a request inside of the tabs. So the tabs are your working space. So my request here is just called new request, but I want to rename this. So I'm going to click a little pencil here and I'm going to call this register user. And you can see now I have a register user request. I want to change this to a post request. And you can see here we have lots of different HTTP methods we can choose from. And all of my requests are going to be sent to the same host. So I want to make an environment variable called host so I can open up the curly brackets and I can type host and close the curly brackets. And you can see here, it says unresolved variable. So let's go set that variable and you can click this set variable tab here, or you can click the little I and you can click edit and you can set your variable called host. And I'm going to set mine to HTTP colon slash slash local host or 3000. So I would set up three environments generally, a local environment, a staging environment, and a production environment. And each one is going to have slightly different config here. So if we come back to register user and hover over this, you can see that it now resolves to localhost 3000. So I wanna send my request to localhost 3000 slash API slash users. And I want to set up a request body. And so I'm going to click on the body tab and I'm going to click into raw. And then I'm going to select JSON. So in here we can specify a JSON body. So my JSON body is going to have a first name, last name, email, password, and a password confirmation. And you'll notice that we're using variables here still. And you'll notice that we're using environment variables here again. So I can set this first name, last name, email, and password up here in my environment, but I want to randomly generate these every time I make a request. So you'll notice this pre-rec, which stands for pre-request tab here, and we can put in a script that's going to run before we send our request. I'm just going to collapse this panel here so we get a little bit more room. And now I'm going to generate a first name, last name, and email address that I can use for every request. So I'm going to say let first name equal to, so I'm going to say PM, which stands for postman dot environment dot replace in, and then I'm going to execute this function. And this may look familiar, and that's because this is just regular old JavaScript with some built-in methods like PM and all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to execute this with a string. My string is going to be curly brackets, curly brackets, and then we close those. 
And now we can use a variable that Postman provides for us. And this variable is going to be random first name. Let's do this with last name. I'm going to say random last name. Now let's console.log. And I want to console.log the first name. And I want to do the same with last name. Save that and open up the console. And we can send this request. And you can see here we get first name and a random last name. So let's combine these to create an email address. So I'm going to say let email is equal to, and I'm just going to open up backticks because remember this is just plain old JavaScript. And I'm going to say dollar sign first name, and then I'm going to call dot two lower case on that and execute that. Then I'm going to put a dot. I'm going to say last name dot two lower case, and then I'm going to say at example.com. So now we have these three variables. We need to set these into our environment variables so we can send them along with the request and then use them in subsequent requests. So I'm going to say pm dot environment and then I'm going to call dot set and set takes two arguments. The first argument is the variable that you want to set. So I want to set first name and then the second argument is what you want to set it to. So I want to set it to the value of first name. And then I want to do the same with last name. And I want to do the same with email. Let's send this request again. And if we have a look at the request body, you can see we've sent it with a first name, a last name, an email address, but we've just sent the password variable. And it hasn't actually resolved to a real password. So let's set this inside of our environment variable. So I'm going to click edit. I'm going to add password. And I'm just going to make this password. And you'll notice in here that the first name and last name and email have been set into our environment variables. So let's try send this request again. We have a look in request body. And now we have a nice looking request. And if we have a look in response body, it says user successfully created. So this particular API requires that you verify your email address. So I'm going to add a request for verifying email addresses. So I'm going to click on add request again, and this is going to be a post request. And I'm going to call this verify email. And I'm going to send this request to our host slash API slash users slash verify slash ID slash colon verification code. So you'll notice here I put a colon before ID and a colon before verification code. So if we click on params, you'll see that we have some path variables for ID and verification code. So as I change these, you will notice that they change down the bottom here inside of our path variables. So I'm going to fill in this ID and verification code and I'm going to close my console and I'm going to pull up my response because I want to see what the response of this request is. Let's send this response and it says user successfully verified. Okay, now that we have a verified user, we should be able to log in. So I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call this folder auth. And inside of auth, I'm going to add another request. And this request is going to be login. So I'm going to rename this login. And our login request is again going to be a post request. And I'm going to send this to our host slash API slash sessions. And I'm going to send along a body. My body is going to be raw and I'm going to use JSON. If you're using GraphQL, when you select your body, you can select GraphQL down here and you can put in your GraphQL query or mutation into this box here. And then on the right hand side, you have an input for your GraphQL variables and Postman will construct it for you and send along the request. So I'm going to say email is equal to 
curly bracket, curly bracket, email, curly bracket. And don't forget to close off your strings. Otherwise, it's just going to send along this string here without the string syntax here. And your API won't like that. I'm going to set the password as well. And if you find that it's a little bit misshapen, you can click the beautify button here and it's going to make this all beautiful for you. Let's send this request. And you notice here that we get an access token and a refresh token back. So this looks really good, but I want to send the access token along with future requests along with the refresh token. So I want to set these in environment variables whenever I get them back. So let's come over to this test tab here and tests can be used to make sure that your API is working as expected, but it also is just a script that runs once your request has resolved. So I'm going to declare a variable called JSON data, and this is going to be equal to JSON.paths. And I'm going to pass in the response body. And then I'm going to call pm.environment.set. And I want to set an environment variable called access token. And this is going to be equal to JSON data dot access token. And then I'm going to do the same with my refresh token. And now that we have this script set up, I can send the request again. And if we open up our environment variables, you can see that I have an access token and a refresh token set. So the last request I'm going to show you is using this access token that we have in our environment variables. So inside of user, I'm going to add a request and this request is going to be get current user. And we're going to send this to our host slash API slash me. And inside of auth, you can see we have lots of different auth methods here. The auth method that I want to use is bearer token. And you can see that it's automatically populated this access token variable for us. Let's send this request along and you can see that we get this currently logged in user. So Postman is awesome for testing your APIs and it should be included in your development workflow, but it's also really good for documenting your API. So if you click on these three dots here, you can see we have a button here for view documentation. And we have some documentation for all the endpoints that we've set up. So we can also add examples to each request. So for register user, I'm going to click the little dots again, and I'm going to click add example. And I'm going to call this example success. And down here, you can see we have a body. So I'm going to put in the body you get for success, and then I'm going to put in the status code. So this should be 200 OK. And I can duplicate this success example here by clicking the dots and I'll click duplicate. And I'm going to call this one conflict. And this one is going to respond with account already exists. And our status code is going to be 409 conflict. So let's come back to our documentation. And you can see here, we now have a curl request and our response is going to be user successfully created. And so we can change our example here. We have success selected and I can choose conflict. And it's going to tell us down here that we expect account already exists. So if you don't want to see a curl request here, you can change the language up the top here from curl. So I'm going to change this to HTTP. And you can see here we get a HTTP request. And I can also change this to Node.js Axios. And you can see here we get our Axios requirement. We create some data and then we send along an Axios request. So that is the basics of Postman. If you haven't used Postman before, but you plan on doing so, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to join the Tom Does Tech community, you can join the Discord server. You'll find the link in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.